Yeah, hi there. I'm James Gilbert. I'm a transplant and vascular access surgeon, and I work at the Oxford University Hospitals. And today we're going to be talking about some of the clinical results from a Rhapsody First study that I was privileged to be part of. So we have increasing numbers of patients on hemodialysis. In order to do hemodialysis, ideally you would have something called vascular access created, usually a fistula, uh, if you've got suitable vein that can be used, or if you haven't, you might have a graft inserted. Once you've got this access in place, the patient essentially has an access circuit, um, which you can put needles into to undertake the dialysis process. The problem with access circuits is they're always prone to running into difficulty with narrowings at varying points in the circuit. And it's those narrowings or stenoses that can lead to problems with the longevity of the circuit or the circuit being lost and therefore dialysis patients losing their lifeline literally. So one of the ways we go about dealing with that is trying to identify problems in the circuit in an early manner and then looking to intervene and treat them where possible. And, and the gold standard of treatment is usually balloon angioplasty and every day across the globe in many dialysis access centers, there will be clinicians undertaking angioplasty of a stenosis in the access circuit. But sometimes balloon doesn't always get a good angiographic result. And in those situations, you may decide to place a covered stent. And whilst there's some good results with covered stents, we still have a problem that balloons or stents long term only have a limited patency rate at the point in which you're treating. And I guess the idea would be to have a way of treating these circuit stenoses to have really good improved target lesion, the point at which the stenosis is patency and ultimately maintaining good patency of the circuit. So the device in question is a newly generated device. It's a, it's a stent graft that's been produced by Merit Medical. The unique thing about this stent graft, unlike other stent grafts on the market, is it's a tri-layered stent graft. It's got a middle layer um, that's been engineered in a way to make it cell impermeable. And what I mean by that is you don't get transmural migration of um, cellular tissue from outside the stent through the wall of the stent and into the lumen of the stent itself. And we know from some animal studies that um, there's some good histological data to show that with the Rhapsody stent versus leading covered stents on the market, you find that 180 days after the stent's been placed, there's no evidence of any um, cellular migration into the luminal side of the stent. And so this could be really important going forward in terms of better or improved patency of the stent when you treat stenoses. The stent has also got some other um, engineered properties that might make it uh, more durable. It's got improved radial strength throughout the length of the stent, and it's also compression resistant based on how it's been engineered. And then another unique feature is at the ends of the stent, it's got what we call softened end rows. So the two very ends of the stent, when they flay out, um, when you deploy it in the circuit, better conform to, to luminal tissue without causing issues at those points that might lead to what we call edge stenosis development, which is the kind of key thing we see when you get re-stenosis occurring in an access circuit after you've previously deployed a stent. So the study in question was a first in human study. Um, although the stent had been tested and proven in animal models, there hadn't yet been a human study. And so the Rhapsody first study was, was a first in human study. It was done in three centers. And it was essentially a single arm feasibility safety study where the first goal was really to just test the safety and effectiveness of the stent in treating stenoses or occlusions within a dialysis access circuit. Patients included in, were those that had a fistula or a graft in the upper limbs um, and who also may have had venous outflow circuit stenosis but not the central, in the central veins, but not the superior vena cava. The key endpoints we were looking at, as I mentioned, was safety. So the number of subjects that ran into any difficulties with an adverse event in the first 30 days. But then ultimately we wanted to look at effectiveness. So the proportion of subjects in the study that had target lesion patency at 30 days, six months and 12 months. So there were 46 patients that were enrolled into the study. And of those 46 patients, uh, one patient got transplanted within the first seven days, so was censored out. 
So we had 45 patients that made it through to 30 days. And then of those 45, we um, had a significant number that followed through all the way out to 12 months. There was one further patient that was transplanted at day 205, so they were centered out. But it meant that we had 44 patients that we could analyze at the key time intervals that we were looking at. From a safety perspective, there were four cases where there was thought to be a device and procedure related event, but otherwise it was proven to be completely safe for use. But the key things that we found were around the effectiveness. And we found that the target lesion patency, so that the place that we treated uh, was very encouraging at six and 12 months with a target lesion patency of 97% at six months and 84.6% at 12 months. In terms of the access circuit, because ultimately this is all about patients maintaining access circuit patency so they can dialyze, we found that at six months and at 12 months, the access circuit primary patency was 84.4 and 65.9% respectively. And the secondary patency data was 95.6 and 88.6% respectively at these two time intervals. And you compare some of this data to other leading stents on the market at present. Uh, we found that the six month and 12 month access circuit and target lesion patency rates were very comparable and if not potentially better than those that have pre previously reported. Although of course it must be recognized that this was a first in human study and not a wide randomized controlled trial. And so you have to be slightly careful you're not comparing apples and oranges here. But ultimately, you know, what we can conclude from this is that Rhapsody is safe to use to treat stenosis at commonly occurring sites in an access circuit. It's now got CE approval as a result of this study. The 12 month target lesion patency is very encouraging. Uh, and it may well be that those unique stent, stent features that I alluded to could be some of the reasons. There is now a, a global randomized controlled trial underway um, to assess this stent. Um, in access circuit stenoses um, compared to balloon angioplasty. So yes, as mentioned, the, the, the randomized control trial is underway. That's predominantly occurring in the US because of course the US needs to have a, a randomized control trial to be able to get FDA approval. Um, but there are some centers outside of the US being involved with this study as well. And Oxford is one of those centers along with a number of other UK based centers. That's going to be running over a two year period. And it's got three arms to the study. One arm is comparing stent versus balloon angioplasty in fistulas um, where there's an outflow lesion. The second arm of the study is looking at the use of a stent in treating stenosis at the graft vein anastomosis. And then the third arm of the study is also randomized and it's looking at treating central vein lesions, but not the SVC. Uh, and again, that's randomizing to stent or balloon. So I think the key take home message is, is that the, the Rhapsody stent produced by Merit is a new and novel uh, stent graft that's got some unique features. The key ones being this middle cell impermeable layer and soften ends. And it's both of those features that might contribute to uh, improved patency rates, particularly at the target lesion site that you're treating, but ultimately in an access circuit. The first in human study, which has predominantly been a safety study, but we've obviously got some endpoints in terms of six and 12 month patency data has been very encouraging with patency data that is as good as, if not slightly better than the previously reported randomized control studies of other stent graphs on the market. But ultimately we need the results of the current global wave randomized control trial that's now on the way to be able to make those key conclusions that we're observing so far.